In today's video, we're going to cover the preferred bowstring material of top tier Olympic style recurve shooters. So I've had a lot of questions lately about which bowstring material that I prefer, how many strands to use depending on bow weight, and a whole lot of questions related to bowstrings that I'm going to answer in this video. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jay Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery. I'm working to make this channel a really great resource to all sorts of archery from tuning and form, strength training, and lots of other things related to archery. So if you're serious about learning about archery and want to know more, start by hitting that subscription button, the notification bell. That way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded, pumping out tons of content lately, and you don't want to miss out. You're watching the Jay Kaminsky YouTube channel. So again, today I'm going to cover the bowstring material basics as far as how many strands to use for how much bow weight, uh, roughly the recommendation of what all top tier Olympic style recurve shooters use, and the properties of each type of bowstring available on the market. So everything in this video that I'm going to recommend as far as strings are concerned, I will be putting links to in the description below. And uh, those are Amazon affiliate links. So when you do click on those and buy those products, I get a percentage of the sales. And also anything that you buy within 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a percentage as well. It's just a small way that you can help this channel out and uh, guarantee that I'll continue to produce content for free for everyone. So thanks for those that do click on those. Everything that I will be recommending is going to be from BCY Bowstring or BCY Fibers. Um, they're pretty much a staple in the archery community as far as string materials goes. I know there are a couple other manufacturers out there. Um, I think some of them have actually recently gone out of business or stopped producing bowstrings. So I'm going to be recommending BCY Fibers uh, because I am very familiar with them and uh, they are a great group of people as well. So I have drawn up on this whiteboard some properties uh, to look for in a bowstring or basically just a reference that you can use when choosing a bowstring. So on this side of the chart is a soft bowstring and on this side of the chart is a stiff bowstring. So I'm gonna show you how and why uh, specific types of bowstrings are beneficial to a recurve bow, uh, not only from a longevity standpoint, but also a performance and sound quality standpoint as well and also which ones to avoid uh, just so you don't potentially damage your equipment. Okay, so soft. Soft would be something that is not very harsh, not a lot of residual vibration, not a lot of this extra harmonic um, pinging of the bow when the arrow is gone and the string is oscillating back and forth. So not only is the string oscillating back and forth, but the limb tips are moving as the string is moving in and out, and there's ultimately a lot of stress and shock load on the limbs and strings that are typically on the softer side will produce a better feel to the actual archer, meaning less residual vibration, less harshness, um, less feedback almost, but not in a negative way because it's not gonna mask and hide a bad shot. Um, but anyway, uh, a stiff string can potentially put a bit more stress on the limbs uh, than you should be looking for. Now, when I was working for some of the uh, bow manufacturers out there, trying to figure out why limbs were failing from time to time and trying to track it down. And it, there was somewhat of a correlation between using strings that were made for a uh, compound with less creep, less stretch. And um, there were, like I said, there was only somewhat of a correlation, not necessarily a direct correlation. So this isn't like a definitive proof or anything like that that says you should not be using a compound string, but I still would never recommend it. Um, from the feedback standpoint, but also just in case. You never know, especially if you're out there buying your equipment, it's a different story entirely. You want that stuff to last as long as possible. So like I said, soft to stiff. All right, we'll start at the stiff end and work our way back. 452X is a pretty standard uh, compound string. It's very thin, very stiff, no creep, no stretch. It's a really, really good fiber. Um, but it's not good for recurve because it can potentially damage your limbs and it's a bit harsh uh, in my, my opinion. So essentially what makes a compound string a compound string is when they start adding Vectran into the actual fiber itself of the, the strand of the string. And so the more Vectran they have, the stiffer they are, the less creep they have. The more uh, Dyneema or the more even uh, Spectra they have, it has a totally different feel than the Vectran 
as far as uh, recurve shooting is concerned. So 452X has a lot of Vectran compared to X99, and some of the uh, proprietary, quote unquote, blends of strings of the professional string building manufacturers that say no creep, no stretch, no nothing. Typically it's made out of this type of material. I'd avoid that as well. Stick with uh, name brand style, actual published um, string materials that you can reference because these are not gonna get you in trouble. Whereas they say, oh, super secret, proprietary, whatever. Chances are it's something on this end of the spectrum and you don't want that on your recurve. So um, Mercury and 8125. Mercury is a new one. 8125 is uh, the old tried and true basic string material for the last dozen years or so. Um, but essentially they're both made out of Dyneema. Um, Dyneema and Spectra are very similar in a few properties. Um, but then within Dyneema, there's a different uh, qualities basically. There's a SK95, which is your 8125, and your SK99 is your Mercury, okay? So the difference between SK75 and SK99 is SK99 will have a bit less creep. Um, it will also stretch less before it breaks. So it's on this end of the spectrum. It's definitely not a Vectran, but it is still a bit stiffer than your SK75s. Now I've heard through the grapevine potentially that 8125 is going to be eliminated or um, slowed down in production and more mercury is going to be focused for a few reasons. Um, obviously the SK99 is superior to the SK75 in some ways, but as a recurve shooter I think that it might be more important to be on this end of the spectrum than that end for a few reasons. So essentially 8125 and mercury are almost the same with the exception of strand count specifically. The mercury string is much thinner which actually may be much better uh, in the long run for a potentially more accurate string, and I'm gonna cover that at the end of the video. Uh, so stick around if you wanna figure that out. But you go more towards this end of the spectrum, even further left of 8125, and you have 652. Now 652 from BCY Bowstrings is the original fast flight material, which is just 100% spectra. Now Brownell, I think, potentially just went out of business or I heard from somebody telling me that. May not be true, I haven't looked it up. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, but all the Koreans shoot Brownell fast flight and that is on this end of the spectrum. That's why their bows have a very, very distinct sound to them. They have a very, very distinct sound and it is, if anybody has ever shot next to a Korean shooter, you know how their bows sound and it's because they're using fast flight. Um, however, the Brown Owl Fast Flight is not actually Fast Flight. It's not 100% Spectra. It's something else. It's, it's actually called Fast Flight Plus. There, there's something else in it. Again, I haven't looked it up because I like BCY. They've always taken care of me. And, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with their, their fibers. So, like I said, you can see how it's on the, the Spectrum here. All the Koreans shoot way over here. And once I tried this bowstring material... I actually liked it a whole lot more than 8125. Um, what I felt in difference was there was a bit more soft um, like rebound as the limbs came back after they delivered the arrow. So there was a much less harsh initial uh, punch back per se as the arrow was leaving the bow. And after the shot, the limbs just felt much happier. The, so the, the Spectra does have a bit more um, creep I guess um, you would say than the Dyneema's. So it's got that little bit of cushion. So basically it's just got a bit of stretch and then it comes back, right? So there's got a bit of elasticity to it. Um, although if you do overload it, it will stretch and stay stretched and that can degrade over time. So, you know, you may need to replace your bowstrings a bit more often, but honestly, I mean, I replace my bowstrings at least once to twice a year just because I wore them out. Um, but there is a benefit to the Spectra. From the research that I've done, Spectra is less uh, susceptible to abrasion. So that means you'll get less of that fuzziness um, compared to a Dyneema. A Dyneema will fuzz more. You can control that with string wax. But I was one of the type of people who almost never waxed my strings unless I knew it was going to be pouring that day just to prevent it from soaking up a whole lot of extra water but typically I wouldn't wax my strings nearly at all, if ever. Um, so the Spectras will look better longer as well. So that's what I would recommend uh, to reference on uh, types of string material. I really love the 652. Um, 8125 is okay, but the 652, um, I mean, it changed, changed the way my bows felt entirely. 
and uh, I really liked it. And I really wouldn't go back to 8125 as long as I had the choice of the 652. So the next question is how many strands to use? And this is a very common question, of course, all the time. Um, I typically would recommend there's a barrier at the 40 pound range. So your 40 pound range, if you're 40 pounds and above, you should shoot 20 strands. If you're 40 pounds and below, you should shoot 18 strands. If you're a youth archer, maybe you could shoot 16 strands, but you won't really gain any performance in doing that. 18 strands is really the way to go. So I'd recommend 18 to 20. Now, what material is that from? Because these materials are different sizes. The 652 and the 8125 are the exact same size. So that's your 18 to 20 strand range, right? Now the mercury is much, much thinner. It's actually a lot thinner. And this is what I would recommend if you're gonna do the mercury, it'd be 32 strands uh, on the low end, 34, and actually according to my math, it said 35 and a half strands. So potentially even doing 36 on the high end may be beneficial. Um, that's something that I'm just not familiar with, so that's something you'll have to play with. So again, that's for 18 to 20, that's 652 and 8125. Mercury is more, uh, 452X is less than mercury, but more than 8125, but I wouldn't recommend these anyways. Stay on this end of the spectrum if I was you. Okay, so why would I recommend using a thinner string material compared to a thicker string material? I'll draw it for you here. So this isn't exactly 18 and 32 strands. I just drew up the difference between the two. So what we're looking for is the symmetricalness on the outside diameter. If you remove the circle that I tried to use as a reference for roughly the same size, you'll see that this one has a much rounder or smoother appearance on the outside because there are more fibers within this bundle. The fewer fibers you have, the more these little valleys and peaks are so it's actually not round anymore. So to give you an over-exaggeration, compare this to this. You can see how there is these huge peaks and valleys in this string of three strands. The more strands you have, the more round it becomes, the better it wants to deliver the arrow, um, and the more round your center serving is, which is more consistent for your knocks. So there is a benefit to this roundness. Um, however, like I said, I really prefer that 652. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter or check out books, apparel, and some seminar info, head to jkaminski.com, and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you again.